Yellowstone supervolcano magma chamber contents and their condition. What type of eruption will take place if it has a super eruption and blows again? This is what the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, is explaining to us. How big is a magma chamber under Yellowstone? Yellowstone is underlain by two magma bodies. The shallower one is composed of rhyolite, which is a high silica rock type, and stretches from 5 kilometers to 17 kilometers, that's from 3 to 10 miles under the surface, and it's about 55 miles long, 25 miles wide, that's 90 kilometers long, 40 kilometers wide. The chamber is mostly solid, with only about 5 to 15 percent melt. The deeper reservoir is composed of basalt, which is a low silica rock type. That extends from 20 to 50 kilometers beneath the surface, that's 12 to 30 miles down. Even though the deeper chamber is about four and a half times larger than the shallow chamber, it contains only about 2% melt. The method that scientists use to discern this information is similar to a medical CT scan that bounce rays to x-rays through the human body to make three-dimensional pictures of internal tissue. In an analogous manner, a method called seismic tomography uses hundreds to thousands of earthquakes recorded by dozens of stations to measure the speed of seismic waves through the Earth. Data that allow geophysics to make three-dimensional pictures of structures beneath the surface. Scientists compare these seismic velocities and infer the composition of comparing them with average thermal undisturbed values. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Now, what type of eruption will Yellowstone have if it does erupt again? And what the scientists believe is that the most likely explosive event to occur at Yellowstone is actually a hydrothermal explosion. Well, this is what we had on December 9th at the White Island Volcano of the North Island of New Zealand. It was a thermal hydro, a hydrothermal explosion. The water underneath was so superheated that it had to erupt. Now this here, they say could be the uh, most likely would be a hydrothermal explosion, a rock hurtling geyser eruption that is, or a lava flow. Okay, so it's either a hydrothermal explosion or a lava flow. Hydrothermal explosions are very small. They occur in Yellowstone National Park every few years and form a crater a few meters across. Every few thousand years, a hydrothermal explosion will form a crater as much as a few hundred meters across. Though the worst case scenario for a giant Yellowstone eruption is indeed bad and could have global implications, most past eruptions at Yellowstone were not highly explosive. Of the past 50 or so eruptions, almost all were simple lava flows. We know we had a major eruption 2.1 million years ago and 1.3 million years ago. We also found that uh, the, uh, uh, one of the uh, um, volcanoes in California had the same eruptions and uh, at the same exact times. Now, the the latest one, the caldera forming eruption, was 640,000 years ago. And then we had another one 70,000 years ago, which was a lava eruption. And since that 70,000 year eruption, we had another 80 eruptions. Now, though the worst case scenario for a giant Yellowstone eruption is bad, could have global implications, they say most past eruptions were not highly explosive. And of the past 50 or so eruptions, almost all were simple lava flows. If they occurred tomorrow or the next year, they would have minimal, minimal 
direct effect outside Yellowstone National Park. As for the worst case scenario, even previous Yellowstone super eruptions did not cause extinctions and ash fallout on the other side of the continent was minimal. Yellowstone is routinely monitored for signs of volcanic activity. These methods include using seismographs to detect earthquakes and using GPS global positioning systems in order to detect ground motion, the deformation. USGS has not detected any signs of activity that suggest any eruption is imminent. And I'm reading from the USGS page, and I'll leave it for you. And what would happen if a supervolcano eruption occurred again at Yellowstone? Well, if another large caldera forming eruption were to occur at Yellowstone, its effects would be worldwide, obviously. Such a giant eruption would have regional effects such as falling ash and short-term, years to decades, changes in global climate. And those parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming that are closest to Yellowstone would be affected by pyroclastic flows. While the other places in the United States would be impacted by falling ash, that's the amount of ash that would decrease with distance from the eruption site. Such eruptions usually form calderas, broad volcanic depressions created as the ground surface collapses, a result of withdrawal of partially molten rock magma below. Fortunately, the chances of this sort of eruption at Yellowstone are exceedingly small in the next few thousand of years, from what USGS is telling us. Can we still drill into Yellowstone in order to stop it from erupting? We know that some volcanoes around Yellowstone do have geothermal plants. One of them, for example, in Clear Lake with the geysers. And we have uh, Long Valley Caldera, which also has a geothermal plant. The geysers have the biggest geothermal plant in the world. We also have the volcanic field in Ridgecrest, in the Colossal Volcanic Field, which has another geothermal plant. And we also have another geothermal plant in Salton Sea area. That's another volcanic uh, field. So we have a lot of volcanoes that have geothermal plants. Can we drill into Yellowstone to stop it from erupting? In some cases, limited scientific drilling for research can help understand magmatic and hydrothermal hot water systems. But drilling to mitigate a volcano threat is a much different subject with unknown consequences, high costs and severe environmental impacts. In addition to the enormous expense and technological difficulties in drilling through hot, mushy rock, drilling is unlikely to have much effect on whatever magma is stored beneath Yellowstone. At near magmatic temperatures and pressures, any hole would rapidly become sealed by minerals crystallizing from the natural fluids that are present at those depths. Also, Yellowstone National Park is protected from geothermal resource development. World-famous features like Old Faithful Geyser and Grand Prismatic Spring depend on heat provided by the magma chamber below Yellowstone surface. Any allowed geothermal extraction will lower the pressure on the existing geysers and hot springs altering their behavior, in many cases causing them to disappear. Concerns about volcanic eruptions at Yellowstone typically involve a cataclysmic caldera-forming event, but it's unknown whether any such eruption will ever occur here again. Current seismic imaging of the magma reservoir reveals a system that is too crystalline to erupt on a grand scale. Even if there were significant eruption magma beneath Yellowstone, drilling into it in an attempt to release pressure would have a devastating effect. Scientific research has proven again and again that depressurization is one of the factors that drives magma towards the surface to erupt in the first place. So attempts to cool and depressurize magma systems would have many unintended negative consequences, including making an eruption more likely. A program of large-scale magma quenching will not be undertaken at Yellowstone or elsewhere in the foreseeable future. 